Hey guys, it's me, Stella from Sea Cell Sparkle, for those of you who don't know me because I've been gone for a while. Or if you don't know. Anyway, um, I got this cool little calendar for this year that I'm going to be using um, whenever I do a video for you guys. It's called Eco Eyes, and it's a day by day calendar, which is pretty cool. It gives you green tips every day. It's a loud magnet. Anyway. I'm going to read you today, which is Wednesday, uh, the 13th day, but it's, this is actually like a series tip, if you will. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the first two, because I'm on tip three. Anyway, um, for those of you who have fireplaces, this might be interesting for you. Um, or you probably already do this, I hope so. Uh, but if you don't, here's some ideas. Reduce heating loss uh, from the fireplace, tip number one. Uh, keep your fireplace damper closed unless a fire is going. Keep the damper open. Keeping the damper open is like keeping a window wide open during the winter. It allows warm air to go right up the chimney since it's warm air rises. Uh, reduce heat loss from the fireplace, tip number two. Uh, when using fireplace, reduce heat loss by opening dampers in the bottom of the firebox if provided or open the nearest window slightly approximately one inch and close doors leading into the room to lower the thermostat setting between 50 and 55. Okay. Reduce heat loss from fireplace number three. Check the seal on the fireplace flue damper and make sure it is snug as possible. Purchase grates made of C-shaped metal tubes to draw cool room air into the fireplace and circulate warm air back into the room. Add caulking around the fireplace hearth. That was today's tip. And I'll read one. That's another one. Anyway, I'm going to get started on today's topic. And I'm going to be doing a couple videos on how to get green savvy in our new year. Um, a lot of things you probably already know about, but things it's nice to, um, here again every once in a while to get your mind going, oh hey yeah, I would like to get back into doing that. Yeah, just simple things. Um, we're going to start with, is going green expensive? I'm going to be looking over here because I'm reading from my notes, but I'm not forgetting about you because I'm reading to you. Yes, I'm silly and weird and quirky and whatever. So, let's get started! Um, you can go green without spending a dime. Implement eco habits such as recycling everything you can to reduce your daily consumption with elementary basics, such as turning off the lights, shutting off water, and carpooling. Um, most people associate eco-friendliness with a high price tag. Not gonna lie. You may have to pay more up front even if it's just a couple of dollars. However, making the green switch can actually save you money in the long run. Um, let's see. Need some hard advice? I did the numbers for you. Rechargeable batteries. The average family buys 32 batteries a year, and you may be able to find them for 50 cents a piece. You could probably get by on four rechargeables at $2.50 a piece, and the charger should only cost you about ten bucks. Um, tack on extra five dollars for the energy cost to charge your batteries, providing you don't leave your charger plugged in when you're not charging batteries, which is also bad for the charger and for your electric bill and for the planet. So unplug the chargers, people. Plug them. Um, this means switching to rechargeables will actually cost you an extra nine dollars the first year, but you're looking at a potential savings of $11 per year for many years afterwards, depending on your battery use. Don't forget about recycling those rechargeable batteries after you make the switch. For a quick and easy resource for recycling batteries, check out the Call to Recycle program, which I will put over there. Um, also, batteries, if you use regu regular non-rechargeable alkaline batteries, can't talk. Do not throw them in the trash can. Please. They are actually one of the items that you're not supposed to put in the trash. Why? Glad you asked. Because when you put your batteries in the trash can, 
then you throw your trash in the garbage can, and then the garbage man comes and picks it up. A lot of our landfills are getting really, really full, so they incinerate our trash. Yes, they burn our trash. Now, when they burn batteries, the chemicals that it puts off don't just add to the depletion of the ozone layer, it actually contributes 100% to the depletion of the ozone layer. Meaning as you're burning your batteries, you're killing it. You know, you're killing our planet, dude. Anyway, I'll get on. Uh, programmable thermostats, Energy Star is a, uh, makes a lot of great energy efficient appliances and other things for your home. Anyway, Energy Star estimates a yearly savings of $180 by installing a pro programmable thermostat. I can talk today. Like every day. Anyway, uh, the unit will probably cost about $60. And you could spend up to $50 for installation. But that translates to a savings of $70 the first year and $180 every year after. Um, energy efficient lighting. Let's say you want to change 10 light bulbs in your house. Incandescence will run you about 25 cents per bulb, while CFL's compact fluorescent lighting will be closer to $2.50 per bulb. However, your $22.50 in savings on bulbs will seem trivial when you consider those 10 CFL's you could save 65 dollars and seventy cents a year and three hundred and sixty dollars in energy costs over the life of the bulb. That's a lot of money people. I mean like right now it doesn't seem like much and next year maybe not as much but just think about that dude. Hello? That's a lot of money. You go on vacation for that. Possibly. You know next door or something. We'll figure it out. Um, hybrid automobiles, I like talking about. The average American commutes 40 miles per day, or zero, according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics. According to MSN Money, you'll save a small fortune if you opt for a hybrid over a larger sedan or sports utility. Buy that Civic Hybrid instead of a 20 mile per gallon Accord V6 you'll see a savings of $656 a year on $1.50 gallon. Which, yeah, right now I think it's above that, where I am anyway. But, save money. Um, let's see. Low VOC paint. I use, yeah, volatile organic compounds. Um, according to the EPA, volatile organic compounds are emitted as gases from certain solids or liquids. VOCs include a variety of chemicals, some of which may have short and long-term adverse health effects. Uh, if you pay extra couple of bucks for a gallon of low VOC, but consider this low VOC paints have reduced toxins resulting in less chemical sensitivity. They have very low odor during application and they can be um, easily cleaned up with soap and water. They perform as well as far as coverage and scrubability and they are not um, deemed hazardous. Uh, they're not deemed hazardous waste. Anyway, making disposable a breeze because you know you're not supposed to just throw your old cans of paint away in the trash either, right, people? Please tell me you're not doing that. Please, 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 please. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put a link over there for um, disposing of these items. Anyway, um, looking for a great low VOC option. We love Bears Premium Plus Ultra, which actually I use in my house, or I've used, I should say, when we moved in. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to go over right now just because I don't know how much time I have left and this is my first video back so I don't want to bore everybody to death. Um, which I hope I haven't. That doesn't wake any of you up. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to say later, you guys. 
blessed be. Have a great week, and I will see you next week. Guaranteed.